Well, the Orange Bowl was rocking old school less than two weeks ago when the Hurricanes were last in action, a dominating victory over then-ranked Texas A&M. Today, the Hurricanes, a 3-1 record home against the 1-3 Duke Blue Devils. Jason Salotkin with you. Pleased to be joined by former Hurricanes All-American center Casey Jones. The 3-1 record, the victory over the Aggies, both impressive, but they don't mean much with a 0-0 zero and zero mark in the ACC. ACC competition is where it's at. These guys set a goal at the beginning of the season to win that ACC championship, and this is the first step beating Duke today. Yeah, the inside track to Jacksonville in the conference championship game begins for the Hurricanes today, although Duke already won ACC loss. It came against the undefeated Virginia Cavaliers in the conference. Virginia is the class of the Coastal Division with a 3-0 with a lead. Miami plays them in the last home game here at the Orange Bowl. Meanwhile, over in the Atlantic Division, despite a new head coach, Boston College the inside track with an undefeated mark. Boston College is the class of the Atlantic Division with a number 11 ranking overall. Meanwhile, Miami and Duke, they do have a brief history. Uh, the Hurricanes lead the overall series 3-1, to one, but how tight was it in Durham last year? Last year, Willie Cooper had to save him. 17 lead at halftime. Came back, Thaddeus Lewis was, on, was knocking on the door. Willie Cooper, interception. 20 to 15, Miami escapes narrowly. Well, Randy Shannon doesn't have to do much to motivate his players based off last year's game. Just pop the tape in. You know, Randy Shannon asked the Hurricane players uh, after he took over as head coach, who in this room has national championship experience? None of the players raised their hands. Randy said, well, I have some rings. Why don't you follow me? Say, trust me. He says, I'm the only one with a, with a national championship around here. One way to win national championships at University of Miami is to finish. Finish in the fourth quarter. Miami's being outscored 46 to 10 in the fourth quarter so far this season. Well, the Hurricanes have started well. Speaking of starters, we're getting late word that potential starting wide receiver Sam Shields will be sitting down at the start of the game. So, too, will Ryan Hill. Randy Shannon taking a hard line approach and might make it a little bit tougher as well for starting quarterback Kyle Wright, who's coming off an impressive performance versus Texas A&M. Yeah, Kyle Wright is coming off his best performance as a Kane with 21 to 26 for 275 yards passing, two touchdowns, and a great win over Texas A&M. Meanwhile, on the other sideline, a local kid, the starting quarterback for Duke, Thaddeus Lewis. Yeah, Thaddeus Lewis, a graduate of Miami Lakes High School here in Miami, had a great performance against Navy in a losing effort. He was responsible for 34 of Duke's 37 points. 23 of 36 with four touchdowns. It's a high octane Duke offense to the Blue Devils. The Miami Hurricanes opening kickoff is coming your way after these words on CSS. Well, back in the Orange Bowl, the Miami Hurricanes set to open up ACC competition against the Duke Blue Devils, who travel down from Durham, North Carolina. Well, the Miami Hurricanes uh, won the coin toss, elected to defer, and so the Duke Blue Devils will receive to open up the game here. And uh, for Miami, set to kick it off, there's Darren Daly, the junior out of Coral Springs, has been alternating kickoff duties with Francesco Zamponia. Meanwhile, for Miami, a strong emphasis on special teams throughout the week, especially this aspect of the game, kickoff coverage. Uh, Randy Shannon with seven new starters on the kickoff coverage team, Casey Jones. And it's great to see. You see Glenn Sharp returning from injury. Finally, he's on that kickoff team. Looks like he's healthy and ready to go. Meanwhile, very dangerous return man is Jabari Marshall, one of the best in the country. Takes it from his goal line. Will he make it to the 20? He will not. Special teams tackle is made. For Miami, first on the scene is uh, Spencer Atkins, the starting outside linebacker, and he will stay on the field as the Miami Hurricanes defense is out there. The defense played very well last time out again against a then 16th ranked a vaunted Texas A&M Aggies offense, Casey. Yeah, held the Aggies to under under 100 yards rushing, something that hadn't been done, I think, in the last 12 games for the Aggies. They're coming into this game ranked 17th, and you look back a couple weeks ago, that OU game, OU put up a lot of points, a lot of, a lot of yards against them, took that game away, might be ranked even higher. Well, South Florida's very own Thaddeus Lewis, a six-foot-two sophomore out of Opalaka and Hialeah Miami Lakes High School. A play action to start the game. They look to set up the screen. He can't get it off. He's sacked at the five-yard line. Antonio Dixon, who gets the starting assignment into the backfield on play number one. Yeah, Coach Shannon loved the performance of Antonio Dixon last week. He's in that starting lineup at defensive tackle now. Loss of 12 or 13 as you get a good look 
at Antonio Dixon. Here's how the rest of the Duke starters line up. A lot of experience on this offense. In fact, all 11 starters are returning starters, including the five up front, Matt Rumsey, the starting center. Jomar Wright and the big play man, Elon Riley, a star in the making at wide receiver. Second and 22, and Lewis in the shotgun with four receivers in the formation. And uh, whistles blow this one dead early on. Well, this is a uh, delay of game penalty. Not a big distance they can back them up close to their own goal line, but it should be noted, KC, uh, this is a Duke offense which uh, has struck for fireworks early in the season, led by Thaddeus Lewis, despite the loss last week against Navy, put up a career high, 428 yards. You saw Antonio Dixon getting the start. Hurricane coach is looking for consistency out of the junior linemen. The linebackers include the leading tackler, Tavares Gooden, in the middle. Do expect to see Romeo Davis back on the field. The experienced linebacker's been out with injury. The safeties, Phillips and Cooper, Demarcus Van Dyke, true freshman at left cornerback and Carlos Armour at right corner. Play action, Lewis in his end zone. Releases complete at the 10-yard line at a modest gain for Raphael Chestnut, a junior out of Reedsville, North Carolina, about eight yards on the play. Yeah, that is Lewis on that play, just checks down, gets a receiver coming across the middle, but it's a good thing to see uh, Glenn Sharp is actually, actually back out on the field in a uh, nickelback uh, position. Well, there you see the experience, Duke, only 11 guys allowed on the field, and all of them have starting experience. This is a tough third and 16 on the opening drive. And they set up the shovel pass, and it's barely completed and brought down immediately at the line of scrimmage for the Duke Blue Devils in the backfield is number 40, Ronnie Drummer. Kind of a different look to the option on that play. Usually when on the option play, you see the quarterback inside and running back outside. This Duke offense reverse that. See Drummer going inside for the pitch. So for Duke, it'll be number 47, Nick Maggio. He's in the game. Actually, Maggio will be kicking today. Kevin Jones will be punting, and we'll talk about some of the problems in the kicking area and special teams for Duke. Pressure, but Jones, the freshman, gets it off, and uh, not a lot of distance behind it. It bounces at the 40 and only finds its resting place at the Duke. 45 yard line so the Hurricanes will have excellent field position after the net punt of 32 yards from Kevin Jones. The punt was 32 yards. Well again we talked about uh, the dominating performance for Miami that Thursday night game under the lights against Texas A&M the Hurricanes dominate first throughout the first three the quarters. 46. The offense put together a sensational opening drive and Kyle Wright there are his numbers on the season, earning the starting assignment a couple weeks ago against FIU, and he was sparkling against the Aggies. In the shotgun to start it off, and they set up the screen for Javaris James. Blockers ahead of him across the 35 to the 31-yard line, and a first down play for Miami. 15-yard gain for Javaris James. Let's take a look at how the Miami starting lineup Stacks up this afternoon. No changes along the offensive line with John Rochford at center. Fox and Youngblood, the tackles. Bain and Morris, the experienced offensive guards. You saw Javaris on first down. Dalian Farr, one of the three or four tight ends that'll factor in. Darnell Jenkins gets the start, as does the other senior wide receiver, Lance Leggett. Handoff, James has uh, some blocking on the right side and James dives across the 35-yard line for a six-yard gain. So far, I like the uh, play selection by uh, offensive coordinator Pat Nix. Open up with, uh, with a swing pass, screen pass out to left. Get your offensive lineman running downfield. And then you're going to go down with your bread and butter with the zone play the next play. This is a defense that has struggled. Patrick Bailey is the anchor of the defensive line, a senior out of Texas. The linebackers including an emerging player in Vincent Ray. And in the secondary, Leon Wright. And Glenn Williams are the corners. Idarko and Davis the safeties. James Harris. Short gain for Javaris on second down. will bring up a third and short on this opening drive for Miami. Jones. Again, you talk about what the Hurricanes accomplished on their first drive against Texas A&M. 
capped off by a Greg Cooper touchdown. One of the longer drives in recent memory for the Hurricanes offensively. Eight minutes, 51 seconds in duration. And a, a drive that went 18 plays and 80 yards. Third down conversions. The Hurricanes were immaculate. And Kyle Wright also precise. Five for five passing to set the tone. Rolling left side, Kyle. A man over the middle. It will be a first down if it's complete. And it is to the senior wide receiver, Lance Leggett. Going back to that uh, game last week, the 18-play drive, what I was most impressed with was Kyle Wright's efficiency in his execution. It looked like a different quarterback than, than what we used to. You know, he's finally living up to that potential, that top field quarterback that Miami's always had. Well, he did set the tone on that uh, opening drive. His offensive coordinator, Patrick Nick, said he threw it everywhere and completed them all. Inside routes, outside routes, over the middle, in traffic. And uh, of his incompletions, and there weren't many, three of them were drop passes. Hand off and some running room along the left sideline for Javaris James across the 10-yard line. And they'll mark it at the seven. I like what this Miami offensive line does. You know, they're pull, they pull guys even in the zone play. They're trying to stretch the defense from sideline to sideline. In this shot, you see a nice cut block on the back. But you see John Rochford, he's finishing the play. He's taking his man all the way down the line, finishing the play, finishing the man on the ground. It's a great play by John Rochford. Well, it's a hurricane offense, KC, on the ground. That averages 160 yards per game. And a Duke defense, which gives up on average about 190 yards per game. Javaris again. And uh, some penetration into the backfield. A couple of defenders are there for a loss of two or three. Chris Rutledge uh, lost his hat on the play as well. Uh, the tackles are definitely going to be tested this week. Uh, the defensive, they're probably the best defensive player for this Duke team lines up at basically what they call you an up rush end. He's going to be basically on the weak side, the open side, in the name of Patrick Bailey. Had, has had 34 tackles, five tackles for loss this year, and leads the Duke team with two and a half sacks. Yeah, the Hurricanes should be familiar with Bailey. Had nine tackles in the game up in Durham last year. Second down for the Hurricanes, second and goal from the 11. And Kyle from the shotgun has time. Fires left side complete on the knees. The tight end, Dalian Farr. No yards after the catch. A knee down at the five-yard line for a gain of about six. Third down coming up now. This is a big play for this Miami Hurricane offense. They need to set the tempo. They need to set the tone early in this game. You know, as a player coming into a game against an unranked opponent, opponent that maybe you're not expecting a lot of, it's very important to set the tone early. Look, you're not coming into my house. And you're not going to uh, you're not going to you know push us around our house. We're going to take it to you. Okay, see the Hurricanes spread the offensive formation: two receivers on each side, and James, a lone man in the backfield, and Kyle, three-step drop, fires into the end zone, a high pass, but it's caught towards the back of the end zone, and a touchdown for Miami. That one completed to number 82, Kane Farkerson, the newcomer for the Hurricanes this year. Had a reach up high and brings it in to put the Canes on the board first. Great drive, great execute, execution. You see Kyle Wright looking comfortable. You know, you haven't seen that in games past other than the AM game. Looked very comfortable in this game, very comfortable in that throw there. And you know what? Kane went up, grabbed the ball. He's an athlete, comes down with a touchdown. Farkerson, a junior, just his second catch and his first touchdown as a Miami Hurricane. The extra point is up and good for Francesco Zamponia and the Hurricanes capitalize on excellent field position and an early 7 to nothing lead over the Duke Blue Devils. Well, some clouds overhead, a temperature in the high 80s had some rain this week. In fact, the Hurricanes Wednesday practice a deluge in Coral Gables, but it is sunny here for the Canes, especially early on with that opening drive touchdown offensively, a 7-0 lead, and here comes Marshall to his 20, and that's it. Jabari Marshall, the junior, out of Atlanta, first in the ACC, averaging nearly 30 yards per return, but the Hurricanes kickoff coverage responding to Coach Randy Shannon and the changes to the lineup, obviously on the first two attempts this afternoon. Yeah, they've definitely responded. They have leadership of starters on that, uh, on that uh, kickoff coverage team. Bruce Johnson leads the way on a tackle there. Well, you talk about leadership, how about the senior quarterback? Kyle Wright was perfect on that opening drive, just as he was against Texas A&M. Four of four passing. 
And his 31st career touchdown. Lewis under pressure brought down again in the backfield. And this time it's Vegas Franklin for a loss of 13. I tell you what, coaches love this kid, Vegas Franklin. You know, he, last year you didn't hear too much about him. Who is Vegas Franklin? Well, there he is. He's a very productive player. Doesn't get fooled on the ba on the bootleg. Stays at home playing discipline ball. Comes in for the first stack of the night. Well, that's his fourth of the season. That leads the Miami Hurricanes, a fifth-year senior out of Louisiana who waited his turn on the defense in capitalizing on the playing time uh, this season. Well, both drives for Duke have begun with losses of 13. That puts Lewis in tough position. And again, just ooh, as it happened ooh, on the first ooh, drive, a ooh. penalty on the second play. Despite <laughs> that, a jarring hit in the end zone. So violent, he lost his helmet. Yeah, I guess he didn't hear the, uh, the whistle blow, as, uh, as that sometimes happens, I guess. Vegas Franklin playing uh, all out great football right now. Part of the snap. Ball start, 17, offense. Second down. Well, the penalty is against Duke and Sheldon Bell, a reserve receiver. You take a look at the ACC officiating crew. Tom DeJoseph is our referee this afternoon. So it's tough enough going against the Hurricane defense here in the Orange Bowl, but the losses and the penalties and the first drive almost identical to what's developing here with the second drive. Yeah, they're having a tough time getting on track. It's going to even get it worse for them. They're in the close ends the end of the orange balls. A little bit louder down there. A little bit harder for this uh, offense to communicate with each other. Mark at a second and 28. Four receivers in the game and a handoff to Drummer. No running room. Runs right into a pile and might have lost a yard on the play. Well, Duke's offense is not going to try and do anything fancy here. They're just going to try and run the ball out, maybe get a little bit extra of space for their punter to come, come in and kick it out. It's Calais Campbell, the big defensive end, six foot eight junior, 280 pounds out of Aurora, Colorado. A tough start for head coach Ted Roof and the Duke Blue Devils. Three receivers, trips to the left. They fake the handoff. Lewis is going to have to scramble in pursuit. McCray and Dixon chasing, and he gets the pass off and a hard hit at the 30. A fine job by Lewis. He completes it to Chestnut, but about four or five yards shy of the first down. They needed 29. They got about 25. Close, but no cigar. You see uh, Miami defense in pursuit, throws across his body, finds open Chestnut, but uh, it's close to no first down. Good there's, coverage there by Miami. There's Willie Cooper. Fourth he uh, made a name for himself two. against Duke last year up in Durham with some uh, very nervous it's moments Cooper. as the clock would wind down. Cooper, the interception of Lewis in the end zone to seal the five-point victory for the Canes. Kevin Jones punts it away. Calais Campbell came close. A high spiral will end at, out of bounds towards the Hurricanes' 40-yard line. They mark it at the 39. So the Hurricanes, again, good University field position Miami after the 30-yard like punt by Kevin Jones. Miami, the first quarter lead, 7-0 over Duke. 7-0, Miami leading Duke, and the Hurricanes back on the offensive. 531 remains in our first quarter. The Hurricanes will start this drive at their own 39-yard line. Duke's head coach, Ted Roof, his team, 1-3 overall, 0-1 in the ACC, and Kyle Wright, off the play action, rolls left, has a man, sideline, caught, first down catch for Lance Leggett. Like that play, like to see Kyle get out in front, he has a pass run option, he has, a, uh, he has Gordon at tight end, coming across, has an easy pass, but uh, keeps on looking downfield, finds Leggett, his go-to guy, on the sideline for a first down. 16 yard reception, well, you have Kyle Wright, you have Lance Leggett and Darnell Jenkins, your starting quarterback and two starting wide receivers, all seniors. They came into the program together, and uh, nice to see them in sync uh, throughout the uh, opening weeks of this season for the Hurricanes. Kyle, hand off. Javaris has room to the 40. Barrels his way across the 35, knocks a defender straight down, and a first down Number run five. of 16 yards for Javaris James. Well, shades of Edrin on that play, I tell you what. 
takes the ball, starts play side, doesn't have much uh, movement there, cuts it back, keeps his pad level low, has a little shake, and then you see the power just running over the Duke defender, finishing the play. One thing that you know, you're going to see more from this Miami Hurricane offense and defense and special team is finishing the play, and Javaris showed his finish on that one there. Well, Chris Davis absorbed the brunt of that punishing blow by Javaris. Davis, the starting safety. The senior went straight down. Now Kyle to pass. Has all day. Doesn't find a receiver. And that is a covered sack as Patrick Bailey, the beneficiary of some sound coverage in the secondary. A loss of three on the play. Well, Miami offensive line has held up very, very well this year. Only giving up five QB sacks the entire season long. That you want, you would, you would probably want to chalk that up to a covered sack. Didn't have anywhere to go. Made the wise decision. Didn't try to make a play out of nothing. Sat down on the ball, gave up the sack. Patrick Bailey, 84, an experienced senior out of Elmendorf, Texas. Second on the team with 34 tackles and just added to his team leading sack total. Now three and a half on the season. Second and 14, Kyle incomplete. Cooper out of the backfield. Off the mark is Kyle, one of the rare inaccurate throws of the last few weeks for the Hurricane signal caller. Yeah, big key to uh, to Kyle's uh, success these last couple weeks. He has been efficient. He's been making good decisions. He looks comfortable in the pocket. This time he seems like he's maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Kind of steps back a little bit fast, looking maybe for some pressure from that last play, got a sack. You know what, we'll look for Kyle to uh, make up for it on this play, third down. It's his first incompletion after five straight. On the mark for Kyle. Hurricanes, third and 14. Wright again has time. Man slanting over the middle is the tight end. It's Chris Zellner, right. but well first short of the first play. down. In fact, you have Zellner. to take a look at the field goal Stop opportunity right now for Vincent Francesco Ray. Zamponia. And by no means would this be an easy strike for the sixth year senior. The game is four yards. Yeah, I don't really like that, uh, don't like that route. You know, even if you do make a completion, he does make a play, break a couple of tackle. He's not going to be put you in a position to, to make a first down. An attempt of about 46, 47 yards for the left-footed kicker out of Naples, Florida. Plenty of distance. It's up, and it's good. Francesco Zamponia adds three for the Hurricanes. 335 remains in our opening frame. It's Miami up on Duke, 10 to nothing here in the Orange Bowl. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. Lewis might be trying to change the call here at the line of scrimmage. Another running play for Miami. It's Tavares Good in the middle linebacker right there to meet the ball carrier. Well, it's definitely Miami not the strength of this Duke ball offense to uh, put the ball in the hands of the running backs. You know, I. I I'd like to see him open up the game a little bit more with Thaddeus Lewis. This is the guy, this is your playmaker. You know, this is the guy that was responsible for 34 or 43 points that they scored against Navy last week. Threw for four touchdowns, even ran for one. He had two two-point conversions. You go with your best guy. He's got 200 of his family and friends in the stands, for goodness sake. They want to see him pass Let him play. Well, you got to give him some time. And it, early on, at least, KC, the offensive line does appear to be a little bit overmatched by Miami defensively. Third and eight, Lewis in a passing situation. Three-step drop, has a man complete on the right side. That's the senior, Jomar Wright. And uh, first down yardage for the Duke Blue Devils, their first first down of the afternoon. It's a quick three-step drop by uh, Thaddeus Lewis. You'll see him take the, take the ball on his third step. Boom, he's throwing a right, throwing strikes. The guy's very accurate. He's good on his feet. Uh, like I said, a product of Miami's to Miami Lakes High School actually uh, felt snubbed by uh, the University of Miami that he didn't get more attention here. Oh, maybe a little extra motivation. Meanwhile, Jomar Wright is Mr. First Down for Duke. Of his 88 career catches, 57 have resulted in first downs. They're going deep and overthrown in the direction of uh, number five, Raphael Chestnut, but a penalty flag is down at the Duke 44-yard line. Miami sends the blitz there. Uh, to get a little pressure on Lewis. There may have been a little bit of bumping downfield on the one-to-one -one coverage. This one's against the Hurricanes uh, cornerback. I believe it's Bruce Johnson. Indeed it is. Automatic first down. First time we see uh, Duke really try to open it up 
on a first down play. We have yet to see Eron Riley, their big play wide receiver, factor into the offense. Uh, he is the reigning ACC Offensive Player of the Week. Eron Riley, a junior wide receiver, put up 235 yards and four touchdowns in the loss to Navy last week. He's averaging almost 100 yards a game receiving, 92.5. They fake the screen, and it's a handoff. Again, it's Boyette. And this uh, offensive line has been unable to manufacture much in the way of the uh, holes for the running game. Again, this is a Duke offense, which generates on average only 60 yards per game running with the football that is 116 nationally. Oof. And you pair that up against that, that uh, tough uh, front four for Miami who's playing so well. I don't expect uh, Duke to get too much going on the ground today. See that he's in the shotgun now. Just one yard for Boyette. We approach a minute to play in our first quarter. Negative 29 yardage in the first quarter. And uh, we'll see if they call that a completion and a fumble. No ruling yet as the pass appeared to be caught by Jomar Wright. And they call a catch and the recovery on the play as well for Sheldon Bell able to smother the loose football. Complete. I'd like to see another look at that. I mean, I, I think down in the booth, if they're, if they're is eligible for replay, you see Randy Phillips get in there late and strip the ball out coming up on your screen now. Strips the ball there. I don't know. I don't even know if that's a completion. Does that look like a completion to you? Well, we'll be, have uh, to go with the rest. Uh, the rest uh, decision on that, I guess. No challenge on that one. I thought maybe the knee was down when the ball came loose. Anyway, again they fake the initial pass and then the delayed handoff. Miami not fooled. Raquan Boyette has been the featured runner here in the first quarter. Boy, when you're not able to run the football in a game like this, and the offense is by far the strength of your team, you're putting a lot of pressure on the defensive Second unit, down. especially here Second with your down. team already trailing 10 to nothing. No, you definitely are. I, I think Duke's game plan has to be, you know, they're going to put the, the ball in the in the hands of their playmakers. You know, Thaddeus Lewis, you know, Eron Riley. These are the guys who are going to make plays for you and keep the ball going, you know, convert on third down, get the ball downfield, even if you don't the score, at the very least, give your defense a break. Well, that's the end of our first quarter here in South Florida. It's been all Miami so far. It's the Hurricanes 10, the Blue Devils of Duke nothing in the ACC opener. Early start time here under sunny uh, skies in Miami. Well, it's Duke on the offense as we get start. Get started with our second quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Second down and nine with Thaddeus Lewis. Directing traffic in the shotgun formation has three receivers to his right side one lined up to the left They fake the handoff Lewis flushed out left side under pressure and brought down close to the line of scrimmage Calais Campbell and Eric Moncor the two defensive ends yeah, It looks like Thaddeus may have held on to the ball a little bit too long He was looking for Iran Riley who was matched up one-on-one -on -one coverage you know, on, on the edge but uh, he's looking downfield, but not too much time, you know, not too much time. This Duke offensive line has got to do a better job, give Thaddeus some time to at least go through his first and second progressions downfield. Well, Virginia and Duke, the only teams in the ACC to bring back all five starters on the offensive line. Well, experience only takes us so far. Miami physically has been overmatching this Duke offensive line, and again it happens with a hard hit in the back. Vegas Franklin, his second sack of the afternoon. Vegas Franklin. Vegas Franklin, you know, you got to love this kid's hustle. You got to love his heart. But this guy plays hard every play. You see him matched up on the edge. Not too much, not too much of a chance by a defensive tackle uh, rolling on that play. Just dips, gets a rip in there, and finishes the play. Great to see. Well, Vegas a little undersized to play the interior of the, the defensive line at 6'3", 255. But as you said, that motor accounts for any shortcomings physically. Definitely. Fourth and 13, and another punt for Kevin Jones. Miami's Grant will let it bounce into the end zone as Euron Riley is there a little bit too late, 42 yards and a touchback. Miami will start this drive at their 20-yard line, their worst field position of the afternoon. Early in our second quarter, it's Thaddeus Lewis and Duke looking uphill at a 10-point Miami lead. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. 
Well, Miami called the timeout thinking maybe they'd have an opportunity to put some more points up on the board, but now 99 yards away from the goal line with a minute 10. They'll play conservatively and uh, move the pile a couple yards to create some breathing room. Kyle Wright with a gain of two yards. So uh, the Hurricanes again on defense rising to the occasion here. Another shutout performance in the first half. The offense scoring on its first two drives, a touchdown and then the field goal KC, but uh, not a lot of momentum into the locker room as we head into not, the intermission. Not much is not very much at all. I, I you know you got to be concerned a little bit if you're Pat Nix in this Miami offense. These guys uh, you know led to, against Duke. Here's a big run by by Craig James. Oh, Craig Cooper, here we go. Open it up. <laughs> That's 30 seconds left. I spoke too soon. They're going to be able to, to uh, maybe get another strike before the end of the half. Well, with Cooper, it doesn't take a very long time to open it up offensively. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's a simple power roll play where they pull that offside guard. It's been their bread and butter all year long, and he's cutting. He's moving upfield. That's a great play. It's going to give this uh, Miami offense a little bit more life going into, into the uh, going into the uh, halftime now. Maybe get another score. Well, it's a drive that started at Miami's one-yard line. 18 seconds remain in the first half after the Duke Blue Devils timeout of first and 10 at the Duke 42. Greg Cooper, 54 yards in the last two plays, a dual threat running back, gives way to Jabaris James. But Kyle looks for a wide receiver, and he has... Kane Farkerson on the left side. He wisely takes it out of bounds to stop the clock with 12 seconds left. This is great to see Kyle Wright orchestrating the offense, executing the two-minute drill, driving his field, his his, uh, his offense down the field. That's a smart play. You know, get the ball to your receiver on the sideline, run out of bound, get you second and short, but also continues to drive and keeps 12 seconds on the play clock. Well, Francesco Zamponia, Miami's kicker, already converted on a career-long 46-yard field goal in the first quarter. From this spot, it would be about 50. Miami needs a few more yards, and they give it to Javaris. James has some blockers left sideline, so with seven seconds to play now, Miami does have one timeout left. Maybe an opportunity here, Casey. You're tight in terms of maybe uh, picking up some added yardage, and uh, Randy Shannon is going to play it safe as Zamponia and the special teams unit is on to the field. Well, I'd like to take a shot, but uh, Coach Shannon, you know it, he's the one that they send those paychecks to, and uh, he's going to offer the field goal, get some more points before halftime. Uh, interestingly enough, last year, 17 to nothing, Miami led at halftime before giving that up. It's a 42-yard attempt by Zamponia, nope. and it's no good. Wide to the right towards the open end of the Orange Bowl. So the Hurricanes, again, did not appear like they'd have an opportunity to put points on the board on that last drive. Started at their one-yard line, but Greg Cooper with a 30-yard run and a 24-yard uh, reception sets up the opportunity. Zamponia is off the mark. The Hurricanes score a touchdown on their first drive, a field goal on their second. Nothing after that point. We head into halftime here in the Orange Bowl with the Hurricanes in their ACC opener, leading the Blue Devils of Duke 10 to nothing. All right, getting set for our second half kickoff here in the Orange Bowl. The Miami Hurricanes scored on its first two drives, a touchdown to open it up and then a field goal, but nothing since. And the Duke Blue Devils keeping it close and kicking off for Duke here to get it started in our third quarter is Joe Surgeon out of uh, the South Florida area, a guy that has struggled onto the field for the first time. And for Miami, there's a true freshman, Shondre McNeil, number 32, out of Dallas, Texas. Duke has done a good job on kickoff coverage this season. Opponents averaging just the 18-yard line. And there is, for Miami, the true freshman McNeil. And uh, McNeil. just as they say that, it looks like the 16 or 17-yard line is where Miami will start its drive. Well, offensively, KC Jones again. Well, Miami came out and took uh, took advantage of excellent field position on its uh, opening two drives. The touchdown to the receiver, Farkerson, and the field goal by Zamponia, but not a lot of momentum carried into the locker room after the last few drives stall. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. 
First down and 10 at the 49, and Darnell Jenkins takes his eye off the ball. Dangerous play. We saw it with Lance Leggett earlier on the drive. Kyle quickly trying to get the ball in the hands of his senior wide receivers to see what they can do after the catch. Yeah, they're looking for a spark out of Darnell Jenkins here, and he fails to look the ball in. You know, you're going to catch the ball with your hands, then, then you're going to run. He, uh, he thought about running before he looked the ball into his hands. Just one catch this afternoon for the senior out of Miami Central High School. Tarnell Jenkins has become a favorite target of Kyle Wright. The Hurricanes coming out aggressively aggressively here on this drive to start the second half of the seven plays. Six have been passes. Penalty flags are down. Nowhere for Javaris James to go. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Over by the left hash mark. Penalty flag is over here on the near side of the field. Yeah, this play looked like it was doomed from the get-go. They had some pressure inside, and the running back had to take it to the sideline. Strung out the play. Kind of doomed from the start there. On the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. That one declined. The Hurricanes whistled for two penalties in the first half. This is not going to make Randy Shannon happy. You know, lack of focus, a lack of discipline yeah. has plagued the team at times throughout the season, especially in the second half. And again, these penalties are drive killers. You see a nice drive developed led by Kyle Wright going downfield, and now they're again in a third and long situation. Ankerson and Jenkins, receivers to the right, Farkerson to the left, and Kyle. In the pocket, fires near sideline, picked off at the 35, 40 yard line for the Duke Blue Devils. It's Leon Wright stepped into the path of the football and the turnover against Miami. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. We'll see if the offensive Duke can take advantage of the momentum shift. They start with Lewis in the shotgun. Calais Campbell watches him on the option and he runs across the 50. Ball might have come loose on the ground couple of green shirts around it and uh, they say Duke retains possession on the bottom of the pile for the Hurricanes Rush. is 54 to Raz McCray and you saw Calais Campbell the defensive man had to stay in his lane it appeared Casey Jones as the quarterback Lewis ran to the left side yeah it's actually an option play that they uh, showed earlier in the game where the, the running back would, be, would, would, would think would be on the outside ready for the pitch Stays on the inside. It's almost like a shovel pass option. Gain of seven yards on the ground for Lewis. He did have a rushing touchdown in the loss against Navy last week. Here's a handoff. Left side running room for Justin. Actually, that's Ronnie handoff. Drummer, number 40, the Drummer. senior out of Salinas, California. Gain of eight yards on the play and a first down for Duke. Well, you see the uh, momentum starting to swing toward uh, Duke's favor here. They're doing it with, uh, you know, nothing special. Casey, so much emotion here in the Orange Bowl. About 10 days ago, that night game against Texas A&M, you had the opposite, complete opposite kind of atmosphere, at least early on here in the third quarter. We'll see if the fans can get involved as Duke yeah. has stolen the momentum. Lewis looks to pass, keeps it, nowhere to run, dropped at the 40 that as he struggles Lewis. to get back to the line Keep of scrimmage. Again, you got a great push by Antonio Dixon and uh, Terrence McCray up front there, two de McCray. defensive tackles. They're making uh, life a little bit hard for uh, Thaddeus Lewis the in the passing the game. Well, the injured receiver is the junior Raphael Chestnut back on the Duke sideline. Chestnut has a pair of catches on the afternoon, and now the crowd gets involved here. Spurred on by the defense up front. Second down and 11. Duke at the Miami 40-yard line. Three receivers on the right side of the quarterback, Thaddeus Lewis, one split wide to his left. A pitch on the option across the 35 towards the 30. Again, it's Ronnie Drummer close to the first down marker at the Hurricanes 29-yard line. It's the third time they've run this play. They're starting to have success with it. And it maybe I don't know if they saw this before in the, in the film study. But you'll see Thaddeus Third is going to take the handoff and, and actually I mean, run outside line. and trail with the uh, with the fullback inside, make the pitch late. It's kind of like a reverse option, something you no normally see from this Duke offense. So a good block by the right guard, Rob Sherman. Again, negative 27 yards rushing in the first half, but Duke has put some positive plays together on this drive. 
They give it to the up back. That's Clifford Harris, the fullback, who had two catches in the first half. Safe play and good for another Duke first down. Brought down by Gooden. The rare time consuming drive four. for the uh, Duke Blue Devils. Blue Devil first Getting down. it done on the ground. First and ten. Again, this is a uh, Duke offense which can score quickly with experienced wide receivers like Chestnut and uh, Jomar Wright and Eron Riley. Riley in the game, split wide to the left, two receivers to the right. Kane show blitz. Here comes Phillips. The safety picked up, passes lofted, incomplete. Closest man of the football is the Hurricanes quarterback, 27, Chavez Grant. So that's the matchup they've wanted Eron all Riley. day long. Eron Riley was ACC Player of the Week last week, 76 yards receiving. Uh, had, I'm sorry, 76 yards long ball touchdown against Navy last week. Uh, Thaddeus Lewis throws the ball up under immense pressure. You see Kenny Phillips coming off the edge there. Disrupted the play just enough. Thaddeus throws it away. One of his three incompletions this afternoon. Again, Eron Riley lined up wide to the left, defended by Chavez Grant. Four receiver formation. Lewis keeps it himself. Has running room, takes it across the 20. Ball is loose. Big pile of players there. Calais Campbell showing frustration. Second time that Duke has fumbled. They recovered the first, but not the second. And Glenn Sharp, number four, his first game of the season, sixth year senior, was on the scene. Missed the first few games with an injury. Just looked like it came right out of Lewis's hands. Yeah, you see Kenny Phillips uh, on, on the tackle there, strips it out of it. And uh, Glenn Sharp is Johnny on the spot to recover that fumble, stopping which looked to be Duke's best drive of the day. I mean, they were, they were driving right down the field, so a big play for the uh, Miami defense. So here you see Kenny Phillips gets a hand in there. Boom. Get the ball out. That's great. That's great Miami defense right there. For the long arm of the law, All-American candidate safety Kenny Phillips. Kyle complete. And again, the Hurricanes set up the quick strike on the near side. Pass to Farquharson. So we'll talk about a guy who has the right name for the job. Kane Farquharson. He spells it K-A-Y-N-E. Touchdown catch on the first drive, adding to his totals. Breakout game for the junior. Oh, Miami again, doing a good job defensively with the takeaways. Twelve Can on I get the my season. Back up, please. Seven interceptions and five fumble recoveries. Gain of nine for Farkasin on first down. Kyle pitches right side. There's Cooper, lead blockers on the sideline and hurdles a defender. Before he's out of bounds, close to the 40-yard line. Well, for so many years, Casey Jones, uh, the Hurricanes have had offensive players that uh, just at any time can break it upfield and explode offensively. Santana Moss and, of course, recently guys like Roscoe Parrish and on special teams, Devin Hester. Cut from the same mold, you'd have to say, is the speedy Greg Cooper. And Greg Cooper is phenomenal. And every, like I say, I'm holding my breath every time he touches the ball, especially on that play. You see him get to the edge, and he just takes off. Got great speed. Single-handedly brought Miami within a position for Zamponia to attempt a field goal at the end of the first half. Cooper shows some moves, weaves in and out of traffic, and carries for about four yards. And especially from a young kid like uh, like Cooper, you're not you don't expect him to be as patient as he is. He actually will take the time in the hole, set up his blocks, always moving downfield. Just got to keep him moving downfield. He has a he has a, sometimes a tendency to, you know, he's going to run to the sideline sometimes, uh, reliving some of his high school days. But with the speed that's on the field, I don't care if you're playing Duke or anybody else in the ACC, the speed is too great for guys to run to the sideline. Well, Javaris James, Greg Cooper. Canes call him Thunder and Lightning, came into the game with a combined 505 rushing yards and five touchdowns. Now they fake the quick strike, and Kyle Wright's looking deep, has a man with some separation. Catch is made by Darnell Jenkins at the 10-yard line. Great, great play, great plays, all set up by Kyle Wright. Kyle Wright's going to drop back, going to use his pump fake, freezes the cornerback. CS is after the pump fake, throws it up. Donnell Jenkins already beat his man, has to wait up for the ball a little bit. 
Daniel you know, Jenkins catches that ball in stride. Kyle Wright throws that ball a little bit further. He runs into the end zone. 46-yard reception. That's similar to the Lance Leggett catch against FIU. That unfortunately Kyle underthrew a little bit. Otherwise, could have been a touchdown. Lance did have an 80-yarder against FIU in that game. Play action. Kyle rolls left. Has time. End zone and intercepted. Second pick of the quarter for Leon Wright, the same quarterback who was just beaten by Darnell Jenkins. There is a flag down, but Coach Roof for Duke is uh, indicating decline. So obviously. There it Clyde. is against Miami. First down, Duke. And the interception thrown by Kyle Wright, second of the quarter, picked off by Leon Wright. Well, very unfortunate play. Kyle Wright on the move, moving to the left, looking for Dale, looking for uh, looking for Jenkins there. I'm sorry, Lance Leggett on there, but defender steps in front of him, makes a good play on the ball. Hate to see a it's great drive by this Miami offense and in an interception. Well, second interception of the game, fourth of the season, and the Duke Blue Devils again will take over the football, trailing Miami 10 to nothing. Kyle Wright receiving some instruction from his coaches in the booth after two interceptions thrown here in the third quarter. On the reverse, there's Riley, finally gets his hands on the football, albeit not through the air. Eron Riley pushed out of bounds on the left sideline after a gain of five or six yards. Blaze Campbell had an opportunity to disrupt that play early, just missing Iran in the backfield on the reverse. Pulls it up for a nice gain. I don't know what was said at halftime in the uh, Miami uh, locker room, but they, they got a game on their hands. It's 10 nothing, and yeah, they have plenty of playmakers on the Duke team, on the Duke offense. This, this, this game is not out of reach. Yep, we just saw one of them in Riley. Again, the option attack. And the pitch out to the left side, Raekwon Boyette into the uh, eye of the storm, the Hurricane bench. Well, it has been the option, obviously, adjustments made by Ted Roof and the Duke coaches, including uh, the offensive coordinator of the Blue Devils, and uh, the option attack has been employed and used pretty effectively here in the third quarter, if not for the fumble by Thaddeus Lewis. The last drive might have resulted in some points. See if Miami can tighten the screws on third and one. Back slide up in the eye. There's the pitch at left side. Room for the first down. A block left sideline. Much more across the 40 again. Raekwon Boyette. He's got a little giddy up in his step right now. Sort of a misdirection play to Boyette that time. It's basically they're going to fake a dive or a handoff to the right and then shoot it back to Boyette coming out. Basically the whole offensive line blocks down to the right. We're left with, uh, you know, Calais Campbell's got to stay at home on that play, shut it down. But, you know, up until now, I, I think this is great play calling by the Duke offensive coordinator, Peter Voss. Peter Voss was at Notre Dame. He was the quarterback's coach last year. Coached uh, Brady Quinn to be a, a first-round draft pick. I think that play, they might have gotten some special instruction by Coach Krzyzewski. And there it is again <laughs> with the fake pass. That's something you would see from a point guard. Maybe a J.J. Redick up in Durham, North Carolina. But the option... Uh, used pretty exclusively here offensively for Duke in the quarter. Yeah, what the option does is a great equalizer. You know, you're gonna you're gonna negate the speed that Miami has on defense by letting a guy loose. You're gonna get an extra blocker inside. You're not gonna block a defensive end. You're gonna take that. You're gonna neutralize that defensive end by allowing him. He's gonna have to take the quarterback, or the quarterback's gonna take. He's gonna run up the field. So it's a good uh, good scheme. Good scheme by uh, Duke offensive uh, coordinator. Little trivia. Keep you stimulated here in the second half. What year was the Orange Bowl built? Lewis looking to pass incomplete over the middle of the field. Brandon King, the H back, and a penalty flag in the backfield, and that's where Thaddeus Lewis is laying face up. It looks like you can get a little bit of a roughing of the passer. I think Calais Campbell may be getting a little bit frustrated with this option running. He's getting a shot at the quarterback. Maybe a little bit too late. 81, 81 on, the on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, the Duke Blue Devils had a 22-game losing streak. Finally brought it to an end up in Evanston, Illinois on the 15th of September with a 20 to 4 victory with the weight of the world off their shoulders they narrowly pulled off another road victory in Annapolis against Navy losing on a game ending field goal 46 43 
but uh, a lot more confidence for Coach Ted Roof's team than we've seen in recent years. And trailing by only 10 for the first down after the penalty at the Miami 41. A handoff to Drummer. Tavares good for Miami. The middle linebacker is there. Has some help on the tackle. Gain of maybe one yard. The conventional run certainly haven't been there for Duke, but the option has been a lot stronger. Has been stronger. They've had so, you know a couple of big plays, but more than that, it's the un undisciplined play of Miami. You know, you talk about their offense being in the half. They had the penalties, and now you see this drive being continued for Duke by penalties. Uh, you know, late hit penalties, roughing the quarterback penalties on defense. Max line up in the eye, receiver on each side. Market second and ten. Lewis backs up, looks towards the end zone, and overthrown intended for Eron Riley. And it's been a frustrating afternoon for Lewis and Riley as that tandem connected early and often in Annapolis last week. Six catches, 235 yards, and four touchdowns for Riley against uh, Navy last week. And Carlos Armour uh, has been doing a great job covering uh, Eron Riley today. Kind of, kind of basically taking their best playmaker out of the game. But I, you know, I'm thinking down the line, Thaddeus Lewis is going to continue to go to him. Hopefully, Carlos can come up with some big plays. They set up the screen. Drummer has some blockers across the 20, the 15, the 10, the end zone. The Duke touchdown brings the Blue Devils within four points of Miami. 41 yards, Lewis to Drummer on a screenplay third down conversion and the Orange Bowl has been silenced. First touchdown. Well he looks to, Drummer. he's looking to the left they had three wide receivers off left and then he dumps it off to Drummer. Great blocking downfield by this Duke offensive line. I'll tell you what 10 to 7 third quarter. Miami needs to make some uh, make some changes and make them quick. Get some points on the scoreboard, or this is going to be uh, this is going to be embarrassing. New kicker Nick Maggio yes, with the point after actually the second touchdown on the season for the senior drummer, both as receptions. So with 4:35 to play in our third quarter, eerily reminiscent of last year in Durham, Miami's lead is only three over Duke. Here in the city of Miami, west of downtown in the Orange Bowl, where the Hurricanes are playing out their final season before the move up north. As to what year the stadium was built, neither Casey nor myself was alive at the time. I don't know if that helps. How about that? 70 years here in the Orange Bowl. Final game will be played against the, the Virginia Cavaliers, but uh, Miami not looking ahead at this point, focusing on the matter at hand, and that is a 10 to 7 lead right now over Duke after the touchdown and a seven play 80 yard drive on third down Thaddeus Lewis on a screen play to Ronnie Drummer Drummer takes it 41 yards for the touchdown. The kickoff to Miami at the five yard line across the 25 and met at the 30 yard line for the Hurricanes is the true freshman Shambri McNeil. Oh the Hurricanes will certainly need their fans to get involved here all of a sudden just a three point game. I told you back in 1937 look at the original construction cost. But a lot of history here Casey Jones as you know through your playing career with the Hurricanes and before you obviously five Super Bowls the Dolphins called the stadium home for so long banner still over there 58 game home winning streak and NCAA record wonderful place to play only great memories Kyle completes left side nowhere to run and slipping to the turf for the Orange Bowl and the wide receiver that's Farquharson well, certainly not today is not a great example of this Orange Bowl, but uh, you know maybe last week when it was rocking, you know there is no greater place to play a football game. I'll say it. I played in two Super Bowls. I played in uh, you know stadiums across the nation. When it's rocking in here, second to none. 
See the scoring drive for Duke. Seven plays, 80 yards. Yep. After the uh, second interception thrown by Kyle Wright, some conversation on the far sideline. Uh, the Duke bench uh, actually an injured player is the man that has the two interceptions in the quarter. Uh, Leon Wright. Like he needs to get stretched out on the sideline. will have to sit out of play. It's not a whole lot of uh, adrenaline running through that hurricane offensive huddle right now. Not really. They need to get back on track and, you know, hopefully maybe the running game, maybe a spark from uh, Javaris James or Craig Cooper can get this offense back on track. But, you know, again, you're looking at second and ten, not the situation Pat Nix has uh, ideally for this offense. Pitch out right side, James brought down in the backfield. Defense. Heavy pursuit on the near side. Tackle is made. For the Blue Devils by the outside linebacker Marcus Jones, a junior who began his career in Durham as a, a quarterback and a wide receiver. Yeah, Marcus on that play did a good job of keeping outside leverage, meaning he still had the outside protected, fending off the blocker and was able to make a great play on the running back there. Tell you what, third and long for the Miami offense. Need something, uh, need something get started, need something started fast. Need a spark, need some playmakers. Duke comes on the blitz. Miami picks it up initially. Kyle can't find a man, and he's not going to have anywhere close to the room he needs. He's hit hard at the 35-yard line, and he's still down on the field. Nothing happening downfield. Receivers couldn't get open. You, you'd think that they could get open one, one uh, man to man. They, Duke did bring the blitz that time. It's picked up very well. You see Derek Morris coming back and actually taking two guys. Kyle Wright pulls the ball down. Not known for his feet. Uh, gets out for a four yard gain, but it's still fourth down. Duke's leading tackler, 31, Vincent Ray from behind, drags down Kyle Wright. Wrenched his neck there pretty good. Hopefully he's okay. Boschers punt. Not a lot of distance. It does take a Miami bounce. And uh, down to at the 32 yard line by Randy Phillips. Well, the Duke Blue Devils have absolutely rested away all of the momentum here in the Orange Bowl as they trail by three, and they've got the football. That is Lewis, the Duke quarterback, his team trailing by only three. A handoff to Justin Boyle, the senior out of Georgia. And a penalty flag is down. Again, three running backs, a couple of fullbacks, a lot of options in the backfield for Duke. Holding, Holding. offense, Holding. number 60, 60. 10 yards, yard, previous, previous spot. spot, repeat first down. Zach Marides, as you hear the clapping from Taraz McCray. Fourth penalty against Duke. Total of 29 yards heading in the opposite direction to bring up a first and 20. Again, an experienced offensive line. The entire offense started in 2006 for Duke. And they all remember what happened in Durham when Duke outscored Miami 13 0 in the fourth quarter and had a chance to win it in the waning seconds. Boyle breaks a tackle, manages to pick up a few. Lewis. Under two minutes Passes to play in our third play. quarter. You see Passes Kirby Freeman ball. get the right arm loose. Kyle Wright on that third down run. Hanged up on the play. Like he kind of twisted his neck a little bit on the play, and so they're, uh, they're calling Kirby. you got to always be ready. Don't know when your number's going to be called. You know, he was benched after that Oklahoma game. But uh, he's been preparing uh, along with Kyle Wright for uh, whatever opportunity might come his way. It's a Duke offense that scored nine touchdowns in the last two games. A victory over Northwestern, a loss to Navy. Again, in and out of the hands of some would-be tacklers is Raekwon Boyette. And they pick up a lot of the yardage they lost on that first down penalty. Uh, great job by that uh, Duke offensive line, especially on the left side there, Cameron Goldberg. You see him in the tight end actually handling Calais Campbell. You know, that one missed tackle there by Colin McCarthy. Miami on both sides of the ball aren't executing the fundamentals, blocking and tackling. That's what is allowing this Duke team to get back into the game. 17 yards for Boyette, brings up a third and one, but whistles for the officials. And they're going to review this one. 
maybe uh, spot the spot of the football. Now, well, Miami needs all the help they can get, and if they can get uh, any help from the officials on their side or down in the booth, we'll take it. But, uh, you know, they're reviewing it, whether it's a first down or a third down. Either way, you know, on the offensive side, they're looking for a spark. I think on the defense, you know, where they had success early on, they had success with sacks and, 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 and big plays like that. They need a big play of their own. Willie Cooper, number 28, the initial hit. Uh, checking the spot of the football. This might be a better angle for us, Casey. See Colin McCarthy uh, slips off there a little bit. Well, they're calling uh, the line of scrimmage the 43-yard line. I don't think there'd be much of a, a difference either way. Third and inches is where it would be right now. You saw some hard running by Raekwon Boyette. Came into the game with uh, one touchdown on the season. Did score a touchdown in the game against Miami last year. 5 foot 10 uh, runner out of Wilson, North Carolina. Duke without the services of a bruising fullback. Tyler Robinson suffered a leg injury. Video confirms the call on the field. Third down. Not a very elaborate explanation as to what was reviewed, <laughs> but we'll move on nonetheless. So big play coming up on huge both sides. Play. Huge play for this Miami defense. You know, look for these guys inside. Got Dixon, McCray. If this guy's going to buckle down. One man in the backfield. Third and less than a yard. It's a handoff to Justin Boyle. Cuts it back towards the middle and might have enough for the first down. Original call was to the right side. That was sealed off, but a cut up the field for the senior out of Georgia, Justin Boyle. Looks like they'll take some time and measure. With five seconds now remaining in the third quarter beginning of the play you, you sense that that Miami defensive line with the penetration was going to shut that play down but lo and behold he, uh, he he's going to try and reach out for that first down I don't think he's got it get along chain <laughs> well we saw Duke go for it on fourth down in the first half <laughs> and uh, they won't have to make that decision now Enough on third for Boyle and a fresh set of downs for Thaddeus Lewis and the Duke Blue Devils. Well, Miami has uh, picked up more than 300 yards of offense, but the two interceptions by Kyle Wright in this quarter, I'll tell you what, if not for the fumble by Thaddeus Lewis at this point, as the clock winds down and our third quarter expires, the Hurricanes could be looking at a deficit. It was a harrowing experience in Durham for the Canes last year. And here we are once again in 2007. Just a three-point lead for the Hurricanes as we get set to enter our fourth quarter of play in Miami's ACC opener, the Duke Blue Devils threatening in Miami's home stadium. First down and 10 for the Duke Blue Devils. Thaddeus Lewis with a late pitch to Drummer. Dangerous play towards the middle of the Hurricane defense and a gain of maybe one for the Blue Devils. Yeah, they've gone back to this play now. It's the fourth time they've done that kind of reverse option inside. Kenny Phillips coming up from his safety spot in support of the run makes a great play. Only uh, one opportunity for Thaddeus Lewis to play here in the Orange Bowl, a stadium I'm sure he frequented growing up in nearby Miami Lakes. Uh, last year played against the Hurricanes and played well. Started the final 11 games as a freshman for the Blue Devils. Was named honorable mention freshman All-American. And what a memory it would be if he could somehow pull out of his bag a victory here in Miami. But he loses the football. Picked up by Miami. And the Hurricanes recovery over on the near sideline. It's 52 to Mars Gooden. So each starting quarterback here in the second half has turned it over twice. So I tell you what, I talked about that the Miami needed a big play. Well, they're relying on their All-American defensive end, Calais Campbell. Beats his man inside. He's not going to be denied. Pulls the ball out. Guess who's coming up? Tavares Gooden. He's going to run it all the way almost for a touchdown. Oh, gosh, you'd like to see him get in the, in the end zone. But you know what? A good turn of events for this Miami offense. Got great field position. Hopefully they can punch it in for a score. 
So Tavares, Miami's leading tackler, has one takeaway via an interception earlier this season. A fumble recovery there. The new quarterback for Miami is Kirby Freeman. A handoff on first down to Cooper, and a late flag comes flying in on the right sideline. Like I said, you know, they, they both of these quarterbacks prepare the game plan each and every week, so I don't see there being any fall off as far as preparation between Kyle and Kirby. And catch a break with a penalty here. And Kyle right in that third quarter on a third down run was hit pretty hard. Five-yard face mask on the defense. Penalties enforced from the end of the run. Repeat first down. Well, Miami took advantage of excellent field position on its first two drives. Again, great field position to start this offensive uh, sequence here in the fourth. And a big turn of events after the fumble by Thaddeus Lewis. Yeah, you look like looks like Vincent Ray just kind of reached out inadvertent, you know, tries to tries to just make a play. Chris Zellner into the game as a tight end. In motion to the right side. Cooper has room towards the sideline, close to the first down marker. Only needed four yards, and the freshman out of Memphis comes pretty close to the marker. Kirby Freeman, of course, earned the starting job. That decision made by Randy Shannon on the Tuesday before the opener against Marshall. He struggled on the road against Oklahoma, lost his starting job to Kyle Wright in a game against FIU. Kyle was sensational against Texas A&M last week. He got the start this afternoon. Two interceptions thrown by Wright in that third quarter, and then the injury. So Kirby Freeman is back under center for Miami. First down for Cooper. There he is again. Cooper straight up the middle across the 10, close to the seven-yard line. Well, Miami's definitely winning up front. They're slowly Davis. but surely wearing out this Duke Rucker. defense. May not be uh, used to the uh, the heat that's on the field. They mentioned in the first half, 97 degrees. And when you get long drives like this, Duke's defense, and I mean, yeah, Duke's defense has been on the field quite a bit this game. Maybe starting to wear out a little bit. Well, Thaddeus Lewis threw three interceptions against Miami as a freshman last year. Said he learned from that experience, but two fumbles here. Very costly. Could prove the difference if Miami can take advantage. And here is a second and six. They only need the one yard line. And Kirby Freeman is going to burn one of Miami's three timeouts here in the second half. 12.53 remains in our fourth quarter after the Lewis fumble and recovery by Tavares Gooden. The Hurricanes threatening on offense, leading by three. Miami has a second and six from the seven with Kirby Freeman. In at quarterback after the injury to Kyle Wright. Kirby can't find a man. Penalty flag in the backfield. Still looking, keeping it alive. He's going to take off, picks up a couple. We'll Kirby see what the flag Freeman is all about. A very long developing play as Freeman had all his receivers covered. Trying to keep it alive as long as he could. Yeah, he did. I think he may have missed. Varys James kind of ducked in and slid under the coverage there. Didn't see him, chose to run instead. It's kind of scary when that happens because holding when offense, holding offense, offense number, 62, number 62 10 yards, 10 yards previous, spot, previous spot second down, second down. Like, I was, like I was beginning to say when it's a little bit scary when he's running around like that because the offensive line has to hold their blocks even that much longer and there it looks like rock they're probably going to get Rockford for pulling that guy down which to me as an offensive lineman is a great play. I don't understand why uh, these refs and umps always are picking on offensive linemen. <laughs> KC the disgrace. former center. I think that's a great play by John Rockford. I do. How, how hard is it to, for the play taking that long again to develop? To it's just that much more time. I mean, you got to hold your blocks that much more, so it, it definitely makes it harder for the offensive line. Second and 16. Kirby throws off his back foot with a couple of Duke defenders Oof. hot on his heels. And uh, I guess you can question whether or not he was out of the pocket with a potential grounding call. Javaris James, closest man of the football. And this is going in reverse for Miami. Yeah, it's not what they, uh, that's not what they wanted to do after a turnover. They wanted, you know, create the momentum, gain the momentum going into the end zone. They're going backwards, and actually Freeman on that play was lucky to throw the ball away. It looks like he almost fumbled going back. Talk about a Miami team outscored 46 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Cumulatively this season. On the opposite side, you have a Duke team shut out in the fourth quarter play, 48 to nothing. Freeman finally gets it off towards the end zone, incomplete. 
They're looking for a flag. He got it. He got it. Great play. Looks like they're going to get Chris Davis cover coming over the top on Jenkins there. 28 is the safety. Adrian Idarko got his hand in late. We'll check the replay on it. A very late flag, almost reminiscent of the penalty against Glenn Sharp in the national championship game against Ohio State. And uh, maybe an assist to the fans in the closed end of the Orange Bowl. Maybe so. Maybe so. I think maybe that the back judge thought that uh, thought a second uh, thought a second again after uh, after not dropping the flag initially. No ruling yet on the field. Here Pass it comes. interference. Defense. Number 28. Foul occurred in the end zone. We'll go 15 yards. Previous spot. Two and a half yard line. Well, Kirby's uh, going to just th throw it in there. Idarko has good coverage coming over the top. Could have gone either way. Maybe a little bit early coming over the top. Pass thrown a little bit behind the receiver. But Miami will take advantage, nevertheless, in the pass interference against the safety Adrian Idarko. First and goal from the two. Two tight ends. Cooper in the backfield takes the pitch out right. Morris the lead blocker. Cooper towards the goal line. Touchdown. Great to see him finally finish that drive. They need a little bit of help with the penalty uh, on the interference call, but you know what? Touchdown's a touchdown. Craig Cooper follows his senior offensive lineman, Derek Morris, into the end zone. And uh, I think Randy Shane is uh, bringing a sigh of relief. Here it is again, a little bit of a, a, little bit of a high toss there. You see uh, Derek Morris kicking out, and uh, Craig Cooper lowers the boom, as they say, gets into the end zone. Low snap, kick is up by Zamponia, and good. So the Cooper touchdown is third of the season, running with the football. He's got 69 yards on the day. He shows his strength at the goal line. After the fumble, the Hurricanes take advantage and open up once again a 10-point, 17-7 lead. Oh, it's amazing, Casey Jones, about Greg Cooper to me. The freshman out of Memphis, not necessarily the speed as advertised, but the strength on the frame of the six foot, 195 pounder in goal line situations to move a pile as he did from two yards out for the Hurricane score. Yeah, he's got a lot of tools, and one of them is just like you said, he is able to, when, it, when the time comes, lower that shoulder, push people around, and get in the end zone. On that play, you know, he was not going to be denied, and that's what you like to see out of this Miami offense. For the first time, you start to see a sense of urgency from the you know, first couple drives. They had that sense of urgency. It's great to see him get it back. Kick off by Darren Daly at the five. Jabari Marshall, few cuts, stiff arm across the 30. And to the 33, they're going to rule him down. The ball came loose late. Jabari Marshall, the leading returner in the ACC, with a strong return on that one. Catch Sports Night weekdays, 6 and 11 p.m. Eastern time for a fast break debate of the hottest sports stories in the Southeast and the biggest sports celebrities. Get the latest information on all your local teams with Sports Night only on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Well, Duke had the ball trailing by three and driving when Thaddeus Lewis fumbled for the second time here in the second half. Tavares Gooden recovered, and Miami took it into the end zone for a 17-7 lead. Lewis again under center. Raquan Boyette with the handoff across the 35. Kenny Phillips is there for Miami. Still, you see, uh, you know, see Duke picking up where they left off, running the ball a little bit. Kind of concerning to see a Duke team hasn't had that much success running the ball, run it that effectively against Miami. Boyette alone has 53 yards for a Duke team that averages 60 per game running with the football. Man in motion is right. Again, Boyette. This time, Eric Monker, Vegas Franklin. Also for Miami. On the bottom of the pile is uh, Tavares Gooden. Good Miami's leading tackler. 
CSS is looking for the ultimate fan in college sports. Just send us a two minute video why you and your school offer the ultimate fan experience. You could win the ultimate prize if it's good enough and even see your video on CSS. Visit CSS sports.com backslash ultimate fan for more details. They give it to the up back and that's the fullback Clifford Harris moving the pile into Hurricanes territory. So with plenty of time remaining here. Ten and a half minutes Casey Jones and your running attack uh, powerful here in the second half Ted Roof sticking with it. Yeah, one thing that Miami has not done very good is the fundamentals. You talk about the missed tackles and on just a simple dive play with the fullback Clifford Harris. See three missed tackles. Randy Shane, Tim Walton can't be can't be happy with that. Another thing I you might want to take a look at is they're getting Kenny Phillips to come up more in run coverage. They're leaving the, the Bruce Johnson in the corner one on one with Elon Riley. Look for that going downfield. Backs in the eye, play action, Lewis over the middle, under thrown. The receiver trying to come back for it, the tight end, Nick Stefano. And they rule that the catch is made. The senior tight end out of Wheeling, West Virginia, good for 15 yards as Lewis threw it off his back foot. Again, he takes a nice shot, but let's see if he traps it here. Looks like a good catch. I don't know if it came out a little bit there, but uh, don't think they're going to have time to review it. First and ten for Duke. Nick Stefano, six foot four, 235 pounds. Oh, and he got uh, it. KC just pushed the red button. And they're going to send <laughs> it back up to the booth. The previous play is, is under review. Well, oh, this uh, obviously not what Hurricane fans uh, were hoping for after that impressive victory over Texas A&M nine nights ago here in the Orange Bowl. A Duke team that comes in one and three. Just had a 22 game losing streak snapped. And uh, again, if not for those turnovers by the quarterback Lewis could be tighter than the 10 point separation right now. Yeah, it's very concerning for both sides of the ball. You know, Miami offense has really sputtered uh, you know since those first opening drives and hasn't really looked like that same team that they uh, you know that scored 34 points against Texas A&M on the other side of the ball you know the defense has missed tackles and they haven't created that game tackling the big plays they've had sacks early on so what sacks was you know success with sacks early on in the game but haven't had a very good pressure on since then. You got to look at the Duke head coach Ted Roof took over in October of 2003 for Carl Franks uh, at that time Franks the head coach his team was demolished at home by Wake Forest Roof went on in the final five games he won two in the ACC including one over his alma mater Georgia Tech the play stands as called on the field Roof and the Blue Devils fought hard in the loss to Miami last year their next opponent is also a tough loss against Wake Forest. That's what's next up for Duke. They take on the Demon Deacons back home in Durham. This is the end of their four game road trip. Stefano's catch holds up. First and ten with ten minutes to play. Boyle the single back. Lewis looking deep left side has a man towards the end zone. Eron Riley with a touchdown. Well, like I said, you're going to have Kenny Phillips coming up and run support. You know, they have they Duke's successfully run the ball and had that option play, leaving uh, Bruce Johnson one on one on Eron Riley. They thought they could trust him on that coverage, but not this time. Looks like Thaddeus is going to throw a strike into the end zone. Great play by Eron Riley getting up and get the ball. Well, Eron Riley, who had been silent with his first catch of the afternoon, a 31 yard touchdown strike from Thaddeus Lewis. One after attempt, and this is no given with some struggles out of the kicking game for Duke. And the newcomer, Nick Maggio, takes over for Joe Here's Surgeon and punches it through 17 to 14 on a five play, 65 yard drive. It happened quick. The touchdown strike from Lewis to Riley. They hooked up four times against Navy last week, and they brought the Blue Devils within three of the hurricane. The Eron Riley 31 yard touchdown reception. His fifth touchdown in the last two weeks had the four against Navy ACC player of the week. Had one step on the defender and he's brought Duke within three points of Miami. Kickoff by 
Western Florida product Joe Surgeon. Fair catch is made at the 31 yard line. Called for by Sharpton. Darrell Sharpton with the catch for Miami. Duke. More yardage than Miami in the second half, 189 to 128. The scoring drive, which began conservatively on the ground with Raekwon Boyette, as you had predicted, KC, with the safety creeping up. That set up the 31-yard touchdown strike to Riley. Yeah, it was just a matter of time before they got him into the offense. Unfortunately, uh, Johnson couldn't make the coverage on the play. Kirby Freeman passing right side. Receiver coming back for it. Catch is made. And out of bounds with a first down is Darnell Jenkins. We have yet to see Kyle Wright return to the bench after suffering that third quarter injury when he was running with the football. Kirby Freeman more effective when he's out of the pocket. They roll him out to the right, throws a strike to Darnell Jenkins. Hopefully get a good, get another score. You know, one of the things that Randy Shannon preached all week was this Duke team was not going to quit. In all the games he's watched them play, they did not quit. They were good in the fourth quarter. And lo and behold, Miami is taking them only a uh, three-point lead into the fourth quarter. Spread out the offense. And Kirby on a design running play, it would seem, with some nifty moves across midfield, across the 40. A first down run for the Hurricane Junior quarterback out of Brownwood, Texas. Well, he is exciting, but just hold on to that ball, please. You see him directing traffic, kind of get a block from uh, James there. Jukes a guy, he's looking downfield, slides down for a first down. Sometimes scary, but it's very effective on this, uh, on this play. Great move to fake out the outside linebacker number six, Marcus Jones. Again, as they like to do with Kirby under center, they spread it out with four receivers. Far the tight end in motion. Javaris James with a handoff straight up the middle. A block on Tawili Ely, the middle linebacker. Opens up some running room. I had to take a chance at some point this afternoon, <laughs> KC. Mikey I've been T. Pr been practicing all week. Mikey T. Well, that offense, that's the first time you mentioned his name. That offensive line has done a very good job. In, uh, in, in blocking these guys, getting to that second level. Uh, you know, I'd like to see him on second down, perhaps uh, take a shot downfield, but I'd be happy to see him run the ball. His winding off his line has performed quite well. Cooper was the star of the last drive with his touchdown, and now it's uh, Javaris's chance. Fresh legs between those two, and uh, doesn't seem to be any animosity between them. Same could be said of the quarterbacks, Kyle Wright and Kirby Freeman, despite their competition for playing time. Yeah, I don't think that there's room on this team for for attitudes. You know, I think Randy's done a great job of just saying, hey, I don't care what you did last game, I don't care what you did last year. You know, it's open competition. You perform during the week, you're gonna get a chance to play on Saturdays. And I think, uh, you know, up until now, it's, it's, it's uh, serving very well. Another pivotal play, third down and one. Javaris hitting mm. close to the line of scrimmage, and the pile is there for the Duke Blue Devils. We'll see where they mark the football. Could be short, and uh, we'll have to see where they mark it, KC. Did you think at the beginning of this game that this game would come to a fourth and one in the fourth quarter? Well, as Yogi Berra says, it's deja vu all over again, because that was exactly what took place on Duke's uh, home turf last year. Well, Miami came up short, but Randy Shannon has decided to go for it at the 31. And this is a point in the game, KC, where you want to end this drive with seven points, not of course, three. Of course, but it's all gonna it's all gonna end up on this first on this fourth down conversion right here. Javaris pitch out, tries to stay on his feet. The Duke sideline is jubilant, and he might be cut short again. Miami had been four or five on fourth downs heading into that play, and Javaris James on consecutive runs fails to pick up one yard. Well, I take exception to this call. You're going to pitch it out. That actually gives the defensive line more time to penetrate to push the offensive line back. It's more of a lateral, not a lateral play than a downhill running play. Pat Nix, I think you missed the shot on that one. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. This is Duke's only last chance to pull out an upset. Well, Texas A&M scored 17 unanswered fourth quarter points here in the Orange Bowl a week and a half ago. The theme throughout practice has been finish strong, finish strong. That's what Randy Shannon has been trying to get through to his players. Lewis to Riley incomplete and not on the same page again 
Carlos Armour rising up to the challenge of defending the ACC Player of the Week. Yeah, he's shutting him down right now, but uh, Thaddeus Lewis didn't do any favors. He was basically just focused in on him during the whole play, never looked him off, and had to throw the ball out of bounds. You see the body language, the head down. Riley, of course, for the big 31-yard touchdown catch this half, but uh, not what he anticipated. Just the sixth incompletion thrown by Thaddeus Lewis. Two touchdowns and no interceptions for the sophomore. Second down and 10, under five minutes now. A quick strike on the slant towards the 40-yard line. Wow. And the referee makes the call and a very gutsy catch made by Eron Riley, who lined up on the opposite far side of the field on that play. Well, not too much uh, Bruce Johnson can do on that play. Eron did a good job of actually getting his ball, getting his body in between the ball and the defender. Great, uh, great throw here. See a little bit of pressure, but Eron uh, lays out his body, setting up a key, monumental third down. This is four down territory, I'm sure, for uh, for Ted Roof. I'll tell you something, Miami. If they saw that last replay, might want to challenge that play. I think that ball came loose. In the meantime, time is called on the field, and they will review what appeared to be on the second look, KC, an incompletion as Eron Riley spun over on the football. Well, you saw the four touchdown catches against Navy, a school record that had lasted 10 years. Corey Thomas also had four touchdown catches for Duke in a game against Georgia Tech way back in 1997. Yeah, it does look like it comes out a bit there and he rolls on top of the ball. So uh, hopefully the guys down in the booth can get this one right. Looks like the slant happened a little bit late. Lewis was waiting for Riley to break. Yeah, yeah, the timing was off a little bit, but you, know, you can't say you can't say anything more for, you know, Eron Riley laying it out on the line. Rolling on the ball. field has been reversed. Yeah. It is an incomplete pass. It'll be third down at the 50-yard line. Coverage provided on that play by Bruce Johnson. Johnson has already missed a game with a suspension this year. He missed a couple of games suspended last year. Coverage provided brings up a big third and ten. Uh, the Orange Bowl is coming alive for the first time today. Certainly four down territory for Duke, you would believe. Blue Devils had plenty of time to talk over the play call. Four wide receivers set. Just waiting for the officials to get ready. They're still reviewing this one, Casey. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, away from the line of scrimmage, <laughs> a couple of referees still on the headsets. And they're reviewing the review. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes in life, KC, you just have to have a little bit of conviction. I guess so. You know, throw it out there. Let's go, fellas. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 4.39. Well, that is a big difference. With all uh, due respect to the officials, 27 seconds added back. That will certainly favor the Duke Blue Devils and wide receiver Elon Riley. Hurricane fans again. Making their presence felt. 17 to 14, our score. Ready for action. Again, a third and 10. Lewis to pass. Has time. Near side, complete no. Ronnie Tremor can't hold on. A man right there and a potential late hit as two defenders are there to knock down Lewis. Courtney Harris, 49, Vegas Franklin, 47, as Lewis is on his back. After the face mask kept the drive alive, we'll see what this one is called. Well, if this is rough, if this is a personal foul, it's gonna set him up with the first down. Personal foul, yep. 47 on the defense. Blow to the head, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic. That's Vegas Franklin. Who's had an outstanding game defensively. You see, they're both going to wrap around. They both have shots at him. Ooh, went high. Went a little bit high. You know, I don't, I, I don't know about that call. He, he does go go toward the head, and I know you got to protect a quarterback, but 
You know, that's that's in a situation where it's going to effectively change change the game. So, Brandon Shannon's call. team will have to regroup. A couple of costly penalties on the drive. Max line up in the eye. Play action. Lewis again out of the backfield for the fullback Clifford Harris, who had two big gains catching the football in the first half. Not the case here. Colin McCarthy, the outside linebacker who has not had one of his stronger performances with some missed tackles on the field, comes up with a big tackle of Harris on first down. A big tackle there, and it's actually going to put him in a negative situation with back at second and 12. It's a situation where, you know, Duke's had a lot of these times, but it always, always seems that when they're second and long or third and long, that Miami comes back with a, with a miscue of their own. So hopefully they can uh, eliminate those and hold them here on second down. Bell and Riley, the outside receivers, right to the slot left side. Raekwon Boyette ducks under the defenders and carries close to the 30-yard line. It'll bring up another third down for the Blue Devils. And another missed tackle. You know, you have the potential of another negative play. Calais Campbell doing a great job working inside there. Another missed tackle leads to a very manageable third down for Duke. Well, just one rushing touchdown on the season for Duke. Came last week against Navy for Raekwon Boyette. Tenth play of this drive, kept alive by a couple of costly penalties. The third and five for Miami's 30. They fake the reverse out of the backfield. Incomplete intended for Justin Boyle. Couldn't hold on. Fourth and five now for Duke. Now here's the situation where you have to bring into account the woes surrounding this Duke kicking game. Today, Nick Maggio takes over as the place kicker for Joe Surgeon, who missed an extra point and is one of four field goal attempts this season. This would be a long attempt by any stretch for any kicker, 47 yards, but not even a consideration at this point to potentially tie the game. Instead, fourth down and five. In fact, the kicking problem so bad, Coach Roof opened up an open audition on the Duke campus this week. Lewis under pressure. He's sacked by Eric Monker. Great play. Awesome. And you got to got to hand it to that front four for Miami. They've they've been pushing those guys around. They've won the battle up front thus far. Don't even block them. You know what? You got to put more than just a fullback or running back on Eric Monker. He does a swim move, takes Thaddeus down. Great play. Hats off to Miami's defensive line, Clint Hurt. I tell you what, if there's game balls going out, you give them to that uh, that front four for Miami. Seventh sack of the afternoon for Miami. Duke does have all three timeouts left. Three minutes even on the scoreboard. Again, for Miami, Kyle Wright is back in at quarterback. Hand off to Cooper. Has a lot of room to run. Uses his speed into Duke territory. And Miami back in charge. Now they got fireworks late here in the Orange Bowl. It seems like everybody's just woken up in the last 10 minutes. But you know what? He reverses out. Great run. You know what? It's easy to run when you got great big holes. But you know what? He puts his puts his head down, runs north and south. You know what? Another great run by the, both of these backs have had outstanding days. I'd like to see him execute just a little bit more early on, but we'll take it now late. So Kyle Wright, meanwhile, back in at quarterback for the Hurricanes after that third quarter injury, went back to the locker room, was replaced by Kirby Freeman on the touchdown drive, and now Kyle in the shotgun. An interesting play call, leading by three, and the pass is high but complete to Farr. Daly on Farr on his feet, has a block, into the end zone, a touchdown! 33 yards to the tight end. On a gutsy play call, leading by three with less than three minutes to play. <laughs> well, I guess they waited till the last minute to uh, to get this offense back on track, but you got to hand it to Kyle Wright. You know what? Has an injury, stays out for a quarter, comes back in, throws a strike. De Leon has a great, he's got a great vertical leap there to get the ball, shake off the defender, runs it in for the touchdown, sealing the victory for Miami. And the extra point is good. If you blink, you missed it. The sack on fourth down by Eric Moncor. The big gain of 27 yards for Cooper. And then in the shotgun on first down, 
Kyle Wright back on the field. Well, this has been a roller coaster ride for the fans here in the Orange Bowl. Again, Duke has had its opportunities and a quick two play 60 yard scoring drive. And Dalion Farr, who lined up out as a wide receiver on that play, brought in a high pass and broke a couple tackles for the big touchdown. Keep your eyes on Jabari Marshall. He's got speed. Still on his feet and finally upended at the 30 yard line. Marshall, turns the kickoff. Marshall again averages about 30 yards per return and had a 94 yarder for a touchdown in the opener against Connecticut. The was 31 yards. Well, you know, hand it to Pat Nix. Absolutely. You know, That's Pat, called going for the jugular. He did. He didn't, uh, didn't let up the gas on that last drive. You know, you go back to the drive before, you miss on fourth down. You may want to play conservative. You think you want to play conservative coming back to Kyle Wright coming off the bench after an injury. But no, he takes, he, you know, gives the ball to his playmakers, gets him downfield. Touchdown in two plays, sealing the victory. It's great. You saw the same approach against the Aggies in the Thursday night victory. A very aggressive posture taken by Coach Nix. And now down 10 with about two minutes to play, Lewis. He's under pressure and again a late flag as he's brought down Monker who had the big sack on fourth down of Duke's last drive. It looked like a jailbreak on it. Holding, Holding. Offense. offense number 74 penalties decline second down. Cam Cameron Goldberg which up until this point has had a pretty decent game considering he's kind of right in the back of Calais Campbell on the way down. At that point, as an offensive lineman, you want to scream, look out, but that's probably not even going to help. But uh, Miami defensive line, again, coming up big. Well, again, finishing strong. That's been something that Coach Shannon has implored his team to do after struggling in the first four fourth quarters. Eight total sacks, and Eric Monker has been involved quite frequently. The team record is 11 sacks. It happened twice. They keep it on the ground with Ronnie Drummer. And uh, Duke's going to have to consider starting to use their three timeouts as uh, we're under a minute and a half to play. You know, you, you do have to feel some level of empathy for the Duke Blue Devils, a team that does fight hard to that last whistle and a team that has been close on several occasions, not only this year, but recent years against some good opposition. They set up the screen, but it's deflected in a dangerous play intended for Ronnie Drummer. And a demoralized Blue Devil team now facing a fourth down and 19 yards to go. Vegas Franklin, again, very productive player for this uh, defensive line unit. He's going to step up, jump up, and bat the ball down. Looks like they were trying to start that, uh, that side screen on the left-hand side. Miami defensive line again coming up big. Last gasp effort. No, they're going to go and punt the football. Fourth and 19 at their 22 yard line. Again, it's Kevin Jones. And for Miami, Chavez Grant back in his own territory. Grant will back up on a fine punt, loses it, and recovers it. And on the special teams for Duke. Number 84 out running the football, the defensive end, Patrick Bailey, who downed the ball at the one in the first half. Under a minute to play, don't rule anything out for Patrick Nix in the offense, despite the seemingly safe 10-point lead. Miami had the three-point advantage in Duke territory when they opened it up and found Daly on far out of the shotgun on first down and far with the touchdown. So the Hurricanes are going to escape the Orange Bowl with what appears to be a 10 point victory. But this game was certainly up for grabs for either squad throughout the entire second half. Yeah, it was. And I think when Randy and the rest of the coaches sit down and look at this film, they're going to see the same things. They're going to see inconsistent play with penalties and turnovers that are really costing them down the, down the line on, on a lot of these games. They're going to have to perform a lot better if they want to be competitive in the ACC this year. Well, the Blue Devils will fall to 1-4 and four on the season and 0-2 in the ACC, heading back home for games against Wake Forest and Virginia Tech. Uh, the Miami Hurricanes pick up their third straight win 
All three at home. Their overall record now four and one. They pick up their victory in their ACC opener, and they head to Chapel Hill next week to keep it going in the conference against Butch Davis and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Greg Cooper with a 100-yard performance and a touchdown for Miami. And that will wrap things up here in the Orange Bowl. Our executive producer for CSS is Steve Thomas. Senior coordinating producer, Russ Aaron. Today's game produced by Ray Koliakobo and directed by Bob Fleming. For more information on CSS, including programming information, your favorite team schedule, and how you can become the CSS Ultimate Fan, log on to css-sports.com. For Casey Jones, I'm Jason Solakin saying so long for Miami and the Orange Bowl, where the Hurricanes have defeated the Duke Blue Devils 24 to 14.